Hello, and welcome to our Creation Focus Worship Service and celebration of Earth Day. My name is Phoebe Morad. I'm Executive Director of Lutherans Restoring Creation. And on behalf of our board and advisors and all the volunteers who made the service possible, I want to thank you for joining us today, but also encourage you to continue walking with us and cultivating hope and healing for all in this ministry. Today I'm speaking to you from Maswachasset Hummock, which was land first cared for by the Massachusetts people who continue to do so. We encourage you to consider the people who are the first earth keepers on the land on which you find yourself standing. We enter the song of creation. Earth cradles our ancestors, birthing new life. We enter the prayer of creation. Sky brings darkness and light, holds storms and the stars. We enter the praise of creation. Mountains peaked with snow, hills swaying with grasses. We enter the silence of creation. Humanity between the ground and the heavens. We come here humbly as one earthly family to worship our creator the giver of form, the maker of space. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls forth creation, evokes praise from creation, and stirs life in creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, creation, and one another. God of righteousness and justice, you have made the earth and all that is in it, but we have failed to honor your good work. We do not recognize your presence among us, and our hardened hearts do not hear creation's cry. We have made your good land a desolation, and we dishonor your image in our neighbors. Forgive us in your steadfast love, O God, for trampling your vineyards and polluting your sky. On your holy mountain, call us again to be stewards of your earth and to join all creation in songs of praise. Amen. Rejoice, for the incarnate word has come to you. Laying aside all heavenly glory, the servant of all is obedient unto death to make of you and of all the earth a new creation. Rejoice. For Christ, from whom nothing can separate you, forgives you all your sins. Rejoice, for the one whose name is majestic in all the earth raises you up to newness of life. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 502, The King of Love My Shepherd Is.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's go with you. peace from above and for our salvation oh, let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord this holy house and for all who ever hear their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord us pray. Sovereign of the universe, your first covenant of mercy was with every living creature. When your beloved Son came among us, the waters of the river welcomed him. The heavens opened to greet his arrival. The animals of the wilderness drew near as his companions. With all the world's people, may we who are washed into new life through baptism seek the way of your new creation, the way of justice and care, mercy and peace, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Acts, the fourth chapter. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Ananias, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, If we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead, this 
Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Here ends the reading. A Psalm of David Psalm 23 Yahweh, you are my shepherd. I want nothing more. You let me lie down in green meadows. You lead me beside restful waters. You refresh my soul. You guide me to lush pastures for the sake of your name. Even if I'm surrounded by shadows of death, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they give me courage. You spread a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and love will follow me. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in your house, Yahweh. For days without end. Amen. First John three sixteen to twenty four. We know love by this that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before God whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts. And God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from God whatever we ask because we obey God's commandments and do what pleases God. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as God has commanded us. All who obey God's commandments abide in God, and God abides in them. And by this we know that God abides in us, by the spirit that God has given us. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. 
just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace be to you and peace from the one who was and is and is to come. Amen. Today's second lesson comes from the letter of 1 John. Now you'll notice when I talk about 1 John today, I'm not going to name the author of 1 John because there's some scholarly disagreement about who that might be. It could, in fact, be that 1, 2, and 3 John are written by the same person as the Gospel of John, um, but it could also be that there are two separate writers, one that wrote 1, 2, 3 letters of John and one that wrote the Gospel of John. Ultimately, it's not the point, uh, but you'll just notice that I don't say John the author um, because there's some of it that's, that's unknown at this point. The main themes in that letter, though, of 1 John, the main themes are things like love and fellowship with God. In 1 John 3, love is a verb. Love is action. It's an action word. Love of God for the author of this letter encompasses action and movement. In 1 John 3, love is not a feeling or an emotion. Thoughts and prayers alone have no place in 1 John's outlook on love. Love is the steadfast commitment we make to another human being. Love is the self-sacrificial act that we do out of care for our neighbor. Love is the burden we take on so that someone else's burden is lighter. Love is doing without so that someone can sacrifice, so that someone can have what they need. Little children, let us love not in word or in speech, but in truth and action. The world tells us that self-preservation is most important. First John, on the other hand, tells us we know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Now, I don't know about you, I don't focus on this point a lot. I don't try and lay down my life for another person very often. But First John makes it clear that we are called to lay down our lives for one another just as Jesus did. Jesus didn't ask whether we were worth the sacrifice of his life. He gave because his love for us was gigantic. It was cosmic. It was universal. Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. We just celebrated the 51st Earth Day a few days ago. Some days it feels like the damage to the earth is too great to heal. But First John says, little children, let us love not in word or in speech, but in truth and action. How could we sacrifice ourselves or our desires in order to pave the way for a healthier and safer earth for those who come next? How could we show the same kind of gigantic love that Jesus did in the way we live out our stewardship of creation? Loving the earth takes more than just having a good feeling toward the earth. It takes more than just thinking the right way about creation. Loving the earth requires action, change in behavior, and commitment to making things better for next generations. Loving the earth 
can mean sacrificing our convenience for somebody else's health and well-being, loving this beautiful creation of God that is our planet, takes commitment and sacrifice and love in action for all of God's creatures and God's creation. The world tells us we deserve what we own, and we don't have to share it if we don't feel like it. But first, John asks us, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? The focus here is on the one who needs help, not the one who offers the help. This is not um, just a call to generosity. This is not like you're supposed to do something nice. This is more of a call to noticing the need of our neighbor. Based on 1 John's words, we don't really have a choice. In fact, the author asks in a question, how can we own the world's goods and then deny the need of our neighbor? But it's almost a rhetorical question that either can't be answered or the answer is so obvious and assumed uh, that it isn't even required. How can we own the world's goods and then deny the need of our neighbor? How indeed. Little children, let us love not in word or in speech, but in truth and action. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. It's the fourth Sunday in Easter. On this day, we always have lessons about uh, the Good Shepherd, and we have um, often songs about Good Shepherd and Shepherd Me, O God, is coming up soon, all of that sort of thing. Um, but one of the things we usually do on this Sunday is to talk about the work of Lutheran Social Services of Illinois. Um, it's a, a traditional day that we would recognize that work. LSSI sponsors so many different programs throughout the state, assisting with social services in a variety of circumstances that are painful and uncomfortable. LSSI assists with therapeutic and traditional foster care, with programs for formerly incarcerated citizens, with senior care, with group homes, and with programs for youth and young adults who struggle with learning disabilities or other challenges in their lives. And to be fair, that's not even close to the long list of services um, that LSSI as an organization is able to provide. And they're able to do that because they have the support of a church behind them. They have a support of people that believe that they're doing God's work. So when we donate funds, we are part of that work and ministry. But honestly, there are more things we can do beyond that. We can learn about the programs of LSSI. Um, we can refer people to LSSI's programs as well. These are all important ways that we support that ministry, which is a way that our dollars and our love is put into action. Little children, let us love, not in word or in speech, but in truth and action. The world tells us to look out for number one, me, myself, and I, my convenience, my preference, my best life. First John tells us this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he commanded us. The author of First John reminds us that loving one another is a commandment. Sometimes I say we are invited to love one another, but that's not even the, the strength of that word. It is a commandment. We hear it on Maundy Thursday as well, when Jesus in John 14 says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. And then 1 John restates this again. Little children, let us love not in word or in speech, but in truth and action. Remarkably, and this shouldn't surprise you, nothing that Jesus teaches tells us that our sole concern should be our own health, well-being, and um, survival. It doesn't mean we're garbage. It doesn't mean we don't matter. 
it means that our end goal is not a selfish one. Our end goal is not to make ourselves comfortable or to advance our own needs. We are called to move toward Jesus' commands, Jesus' priorities, and Jesus' ministry focus, which then brings us to the gospel lesson where we have Jesus, the good shepherd, and it says he has other sheep that do not belong to this fold. Throughout the gospel, anytime somebody tries to draw a boundary that excludes someone, Jesus' response is, no, not so fast. You have to take that boundary away or you have to draw it wider than you thought so. The woman at the well, the man born blind, lepers, the demon possessed, the woman with the hemorrhage, tax collectors, Samaritans, prostitutes, Pharisees, betrayers, deniers of Christ. Jesus includes and expands the sheepfold so that we are all considered one flock, one shepherd. Or in the words of First John, little children let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. On this day, and during the Easter season, and really throughout our whole life of faith, let us love not in word or speech alone, but in truth and in action. Let us consider the ways we might put ourselves on the line for our neighbor. Let us embrace our call as caregivers of creation during this earth season and beyond. Let us even sacrifice what we own, quote unquote, if it will help our neighbors. Let us donate to and support LSSI, other programs that look out for our vulnerable neighbor, neighbors of all ages. And let us accept Jesus' mandate to love our neighbor and to put love in action as he showed us. We are called to live out Jesus' love in truth, and in action, no matter where we go. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Shepherd Me, O God. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Chant me, you raise me, and hear my weary soul. You lead me in pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond 
on my fears from death into life. Let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with, who with the, the Father, Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving Shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls to us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. Gracious Shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Hope-giving Shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Make us, move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need. Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. 
help our community and our life together and give us vigor as a people of God. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection, the resurrection of hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. For whom else do we pray this morning? I pray for my friend Julie, who is facing shoulder replacement surgery tomorrow. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, it is right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people, Israel, from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who lived among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. 
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites you to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of pious meat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Um, just a couple of announcements. One, for those of you that were watching earlier, unfortunately, um, the substitute slide changer, whose name is Pastor Carla, um, messed up and didn't get you to see the cool videos that I shared this morning. So um, you heard the sound, but you didn't see the video. So after the postlude at today's service, I'm going to go ahead and, and circle back because I think that Psalm 23 and the gospel lesson were definitely worthwhile there are other readers that were great but those were two that were worthwhile for you to be able to see that we can't create here in a city setting um so i want to make sure that you get to see those so we'll do that after the postlude on the screens here so you can see and hear them again um the other thing is a reminder that this wednesday uh we have a community zoom this wednesday is um, our justice spotlight week and so we are going to have some conversation about racism and about fighting against racism of asian um, asian american and pacific islanders so aapi um, is how you'll see it listed and um, we're really going to talk ways that we may be able to in our own lives in our own congregation be able to sort of fight against um, some of those movements that are, again, present in our hearts. Maybe we're not a part of some kind of hate group or anything, but it's definitely a way that we can be involved in thinking more, more, in, um, more intentionally about what can we do ahead of time and what can we do to prepare our hearts and ourselves and our people in our congregation. What can we do differently that would help the Asian American and Pacific Islander communities? 
who have been such a target of hate over the past, especially the past year. Um, I think that those are the major announcements for you. Um, please remember our office is still open on Wednesdays, so you can call Jeannie or you can um, leave a voicemail ahead of time or you can even stop in on that day if you need to pick something up or drop something off. And now receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 789. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And may the peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. <laughs>